I've seen you do a couple photo shoots just since I've been in the office. I feel like a lot of what I see on social media, it doesn't look real. It feels like I'm aspiring to be like these people that I see, but they don't even really look like that. That can't be a good thing. So when it comes to celebrities, their business is them looking good. And you're not always gonna know when something has been changed or has it been changed. When it comes to us, we're a business and we have to show our models as authentically as possible. If we photoshopped out any of her imperfections and she shows up looking totally different than she did in her pictures, that's not gonna work. If you're an everyday person and you're posting on social media, you might want to touch a little something here, touch a little something there. And over time, even looking at your own self, you could start to think, oh, well, I don't look as good as I do in my own pictures. If gene editing was available, would you edit anything? Myself? Yeah. No, I would not, no. I like the way I look. But beauty isn't just skin deep. It comes from our genes. So what's the possibility of one day being able to change the way we look through genetics instead of plastic surgery? Isn't there a potential that we could be able to edit our genes in the future so that it changes our faces like one of these filters, but permanently? There is a technology called CRISPR. So what this does is actually edits your genome. That sounds incredible, but I'm also a little bit worried because I think well, the beauty industry is so big. If there was a company offering, oh, we can change your eye colour, your hair colour, your skin colour in your lunch break, that would be big business, wouldn't it? Absolutely. So if you think about all those characteristics, hair colour, eye colour, skin colour, that all comes down to our genes. So in theory, if you could manipulate that, then there is a chance that people could change their appearances. Right. How does it work? So CRISPR works like a sat-nav. It is programmed to look for a series of these chemicals that you want to modify and genetically engineer. So here we've got these series of bases and it uses that sat-nav-like system to try and find them. So here, there's no match. Here, not quite. But there... Snap! Exactly. So in comes the Cas9 molecule to then make a snip. You've now got rid of this mutation or this change, and hopefully that will then repair your genome. Then what do you do? Eat them. <laughs> Working at a molecular level, Dr. Tony Perry's lab uses green mice to demonstrate the gene editing technology CRISPR. I thought that these might be green, so how does that work? Well, I hope that they don't really look green at all. They just look quite like regular, normal mice, because you can't really see the green without a UV light. Well, should we have a look? Yeah, let's have a look. Right, lights. How are these mice made green? We put a green gene from jellyfish in the, the genome of the mice when they were at just the one cell stage. And although these mice are very tiny, their genome is just about the same size as our genomes as well. So why are you doing this in the first place? And we're doing it as a proof of principle so that we can find a new, improved way of doing genome editing using CRISPR-Cas9. Because if these mice are not green, it means that our editing of the jellyfish gene has worked and it means we've successfully targeted that gene. Is there any chance that I could perhaps have green skin or you could change any features about me, maybe my eye colour or my hair colour? Is that possible? Well, we could paint you, but there's... <laughs> But we can't do it genetically. So at some future generation of people, it might be possible. If we do get there, it's by experiments like this on mice that will enable us to do it. Then perhaps one day, with a really efficient method, we can edit the genes in human genomes that might predispose to disease. It's a long way off, but we have to start somewhere, and we're starting with our little green mice. So we might not be living in a sci-fi universe yet, but scientists are working on these technologies and sooner or later, we'll all have to understand the possibilities, as well as the jeopardy that could come with editing our genome. Adam's been doing just that. He's a designer whose project imagines what might happen when gene editing and the fashion and beauty industry come together. How radically might people edit their genes to alter their looks? There's certain elements that people would change that are 
ethical, perhaps, like um, changing the colour of your hair would be absolutely fine. Changing the colour of your eyes, perhaps. We already have coloured contact lenses. And my project, The Validation Junkie, is a window into talking about the realities of genetics and where we want genetic technology to go. And this becomes really, really interesting when you start to talk about the fact that we're now living so much of our life online. And, you know, you probably find your new uh, partner, your friends, all online and through photography. What are some of the ethical issues you come across doing this project? The project is, is, is like riddled with ethics. I don't think anyone should change anything about themselves. But a large part of marketing and branding is about making you feel slightly awkward for who you are. Um, you need to have this look for the beach, you have to have this look for a wedding. And so if you buy this product, you'll be more accepted, you'll be more loved and more liked. Is there any way we could come back from any of this? As soon as you start to study the consequences of social media, and how so much cosmetic editing is happening because of image-based communication. I think that gene editing will, will happen eventually, and so it's really important that we start to create artwork that allows us to have a discussion about where we want to go with technology. What would you do if you could design your body in any way imaginable? I don't think I'd change anything about the way I look. I think I got, genetics-wise, I think I got dealt a pretty good hand. I'm happy with my lot. That sounds like beginning, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs>